Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today I'm going to be talking about the three weapons I will be using in New World. You guys have probably seen it in a stream or maybe some videos, but there's three weapons I'm mainly focused on for really the speed leveling or the power leveling in the beginning of the game, getting from level 1 to probably about 40 before I change any of these weapons. So the three weapons I'll be focusing on is going to definitely be the Rapier, and then I'll be switching on and off from the Bow and Fire Staff. Once all three of these are Mastery Level 20, I'll probably continue my journey onto other weapons, but for now, guys, like I said, mainly PvP and PvE will be with the Rapier, the Bow, and the Fire Staff. And before I get so many questions talking about what build I'm running, I'm going to give you guys an update and talk about the build right now. So if you guys want to hear the build that I will be running during this New World release, make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, like the video, and let's jump into it. So like I said guys, we're going to be starting with the Rapier. I think the Blood side is fairly weak, so we are going to be focused on the Gray side when it comes to abilities. We are going to take two passes from the Blood side, that's going to be the Refreshing Strikes, reducing all cooldowns by 1% on any hit, going to give us our Evade, our Flesh, and our Repost back up very, very quickly, and then also in Guard. So in Guard is also going to help us deal 10% more damage when your target has greater than 50% health. So if you go in very, very hot, you are going to do a lot of damage in the beginning of your fight. And then we also have this side of the grace. So we have the desperation, deal 10% more damage when your stamina is below 40%. Controlled breathing, plus three stamina on any hit, going to get you that refresh on stamina very, very quickly. So you just have to make sure you don't go down to zero stamina, and you should be able to keep dodging, you know, like I said, very, very easily. We also have repost. Obviously, repost is one of those defensive stances that we use quite a bit. It's going to actually counter their attack, stunning them briefly for one and a half seconds, and we're going to max that out. I'm not going to go through each and every one of those, but we're also going to take all of the evade side of things. So this is, by the way, a perform a small reliable sidestep in your current movement direction, and I will be using a mouse button for this because this is going to be a huge deal when trying to iframe or basically just dodge. If you guys don't know what iframe is, uh, certain abilities. So you can dodge pretty much anything with evade, and that's why it's so strong. We also have flesh a very, very strong attack or ability, and we are going to max that out as well. So going through the passes, we have Red Curtains as well. So Red Curtains Critical Strikes reduces all cooldowns by 5%. That's going to be on top of that uh, already cooldown reduction we have on the Blood side, reducing all cooldowns by 1% on any hit. So this is, like I said, going to be a big deal when it comes to getting your abilities back very, very quickly. So this is a very, very strong build. I'm going to use all my abilities real quick just so you can see them. The first one going to be the Evade. Next one's going to be Flesh, and you can cancel it with an auto and actually do a backstab, and then Repost as well. So obviously those are the three abilities. I do want to jump into the next one, which is going to be the obvious Bow. Bow is one of those that uh, does have a lot more mobility. You know, when you think of the Bow, you think of the Musket, they do about the same damage maybe. But uh, for the most part, Bow is definitely more mobility-based, which is what you're going to need for 1VXs or 2VXs. So with the bow, you're going to take Evade Shot and obviously max that out. We're also going to take Impale. So if you hit a foe with 100% health, cause 10% slow for two seconds. All, I mean, pretty much everybody should be taking Poison Shot. It's unbelievable amount of damage that you do to an AoE, even just you know one single player as well. So shoot a Poison Arrow that on hit or lands creates a cloud of poison three meters wide that lasts six seconds. Foes entering the cloud are poison dealing 10% weapon damage per second for 20 seconds. If you do the math correctly, you're going to see how much damage that actually does. We also have Mark, so deal 10% more damage to foes suffering from a debuff. So that's going to be very, very strong with this build as well. By the way, Evade Shot, if you guys didn't know, does grant you 5 seconds of 15% haste because of the ability. Then also, or sorry, the passive underneath the ability. And then we also have Evade Shot causing knockback. So we have a little bit of CC in that uh, Evade Shot. And the next thing I'm going to be taking is going to be the Penetrating Shot. I'm not going to go through all of the passives, like I said, for the entire bow build because we'd be here quite a while if I talked about why I took what I did. But the penetrating shot is another one that I think is very, very important to take because it's a very, very quick, uh, very, very quick, I should say, pullback on the bow. Um, and you can actually do 150% weapon damage that passes through targets and continues for 100 meters. So you can actually hit multiple enemies with this. And you can see that I also took the increased damage by 10% after each hit. And then also took the deep strike, so penetrating shot deals 20% more damage to targets 20 meters or more away. And I mostly took the, you know, blood-soaked arrow just so I could make sure to get the deep strike. And uh, like I said, some of these passives are absolutely insane. So opening strike, heavy attacks deal plus 20% damage to foes with 100% health. And we also have the surprise attack, so if you haven't damaged a foe in the last 10 seconds, deal 20% extra damage. 
and there's a lot of different things you can kind of play with. If you're having a struggle with the bow and you need to find out a way to actually hit more arrows, this may help. Arrow range. I am not taking it at the moment. We may switch onto that. We'll definitely keep you guys up to date with some of my builds. But increased arrow distance before start of gravity by 100% can definitely help you hit more targets. I do want to jump in and just kind of show you guys every ability real quick now. So there's the evade shot. We do have the penetrating shot as well, which you can see when I pull this penetrating shot out, how fast it comes up. If it, uh, okay, here we go. So you can see how fast that pulled up and actually shot. Then we have the obvious poison shot very, very quick as well. And then, like I said, the evade shot. So that's going to be the three abilities I'll be running on the bow. And I do want to jump into, like I said, the fire staff now. And the build regarding the fire staff is going to be uh, really all about the pillar of fire, the fireball, and then also the burnout. So burnout is going to be the mobility on the fire staff. All three of my weapons obviously having mobility because I like to get myself in situations I shouldn't be. And, uh, you know, 1VXing is something that I love to do personally. So I do have to have mobility on all three of my weapons. So starting off, like I said, Pillar of Fire, very, very strong targeted spell that deals 134% damage, um, or weapon damage, I should say. We also have Pillar of Fire dealing 40% more damage to foes at full health. So if you can start off with the Pillar of Fire, you're going to do a lot of damage, bonus damage, that is. We also have 10% of your max mana per hit or sorry, per enemy hit by Pillar of Fire. So you're going to be able to get mana back very easily by using Pillar of Fire. So if you're low on mana, try to hit your Pillar of Fire. We have a couple passes on this side. I'm not going to go through them all, but your abilities gain an extra 50% chance to critical strike. While holding a Fire Staff, your critical strike damage is increased by 20%. So these are all very obvious, uh, really, skills to be taking, or sorry, passives to be taking, because they're going to increase your damage insane, insane amount. We also see the clear casting. If you haven't taken damage at three seconds, deal 10% more damage. You can see how all this scales onto each other. We also, like I said, have the fireball. So the fireball is a very easy one to hit. It's actually going to get 140% uh, weapon damage on impact and leave a three meter burning field that lasts six seconds. The burning field actually dealing 10% weapon damage each second. If we actually continue down, it shows that the fireball's burning field persists for nine seconds now with that uh, upgrade to Scorched Earth. And catch also direct hits with fireball give you 10% of your max mana and reduces your fire staff cooldowns by 7%. So it's important if you can to hit your fireballs. We also have the runes of Helios as our ultimate ability. This is going to actually, after casting a fire spell, place a 2 meter rune to the ground, increasing your spell damage by 30% while standing in the rune. The rune actually lasts for 7 seconds and has a 30 second cooldown. We'll show you guys all these abilities in a second so you guys can see it all in action. But on this side, we're going to have the burnout, which is going to be the mobility side of things. Taking the all-in, so fire staff cooldowns are reduced by 5% for each foe hit by burnout. And then we also have heat up, so burnout goes 50% farther. Going to be very, very strong to actually dash through your targets if you want to be a little bit risky and get your cooldown reduction. Or if you want to just, like I said, get away, get out of the situation, and you're out of maybe dodge roll or stamina, like I said. So this is going to be all about mobility on this one as well. I do need to switch over to a fire staff real quick just to show you guys what we're dealing with. So the first ability, like I said, going to be the fireball going to do a nice impact you can see kind of the fire on the ground over there if we go on to the next one it's going to be the burnout the burnout's going to be a fairly large distance and like i said does a lot of damage and then we have the pillar of fire last but not least and actually goes fairly large range but it is somewhat hard to hit definitely if you're trying to go up something so if we're trying to get on top of this settlement you can see that it doesn't really like the idea and it stays on the ground so it's a little finicky when you're in these kind of areas so keep that in mind when you are in wars or forts um, you know, the Pillar of Fire can be difficult to use. But like I said, this is all around the three weapons I'll most likely be using the most in New World's release. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on. I'll see you guys all on Eternum.